moderate. Uh, it's a please to introduce the first speaker, His, His Excellency uh, Car Bishop Carballo, who will speak about the specific nature to specifically the cultural heritage of communities and consecrate, of consecrated life, theological and ecclesiological profile. You can see his CV in your folders and on your cell phones. You can also look at the whole. We need to, so he has a very long CV, so we'll save a bit of time if you read it yourselves. Over to you, Your Excellency. Hello, everybody, and I, too, will save a bit of time with names because I might leave somebody out. A special greetings to our two cardinals presiding over this meeting, Cardinal Brau Raviz, my prefect, and Cardinal Ravazzi, a president of the as yet still Pontifical Council for Culture. So we give him best wishes because it's becoming a dicastery. So specificity of the cultural heritage of communities of consecrated life, theological and ecclesiological profile. I'd like to start saying that this is an open question. I will not try to answer it fully, to close it, and with these brief and limited reflections, I hope that we can make progress with it. The term uh, cultural heritage used to describe it is quite recent today. It's about understanding the relationship between foundational charisms and the role of these goods in the light of the problems concerning their management. It's noted that many institutes of consecrated life have to manage significant um, goods with limited means, thinking of the big monasteries that are almost empty that become, which is where their usefulness is already limited. And therefore, the problem of maintenance becomes a problem of where to destine goods. Therefore, we have to have serious discernment to, see, to ask whether all the energies and strategies of the main actors have been deployed to avoid such situations. It's clear that this order of consideration should not discourage us, but rather stimulate us in our commitment to safeguard and animate what has been handed on to us, seeking solutions compatible with the church's requirements and sustainable by the entity that owns the property. I truly hope this meeting will help. In this content, context, it's not insignificant to point out the increased interest also at international level in the church's cultural and artistic heritage. Increasingly, it's become an important element in social development and integration policies and in strategic training plans for the enhancement of resources. What's needed above all here is to broaden our gaze, to see beyond, and to network. The subject of this report requires some preliminary remarks. First, we consider that the term heritage can have various meeting, meanings and applications depending on the subject and context. Patrimonium pater, plasmonium, highlights the duty of care incumbent on the pater familias to provide food for his children, the alimonium, alary, to feed, cultum, 
means that which is cultivated and inhabited. Thanks to worship, the world has been transformed into a habitable, welcoming place. People perceive the divine presence and worship the God who inhabits the place they cultivate. Considering an object as a cultural good means attributing to it a value as a human product, recognizing its importance for the community. In general, when dealing with the concept of cultural heritage, it's necessary to bear in mind the part concerning the content and the part concerning the purpose and use made of it by the community. The category of the time in which it was created and handed down, the context of the space which made its value concrete, the correlation with its territory of origin. Heritage, cultural heritage, whose assets are, um, are as like a bridge between generations, a value for the community, a common good to be protected and promoted. The preservation of memory of a given community also involves ecclesiastical cultural assets. These bear witness to the passage of humankind in every historical period and enable us to learn about ways of living, thinking and acting and to translate the transcendent into visible signs. The transcendent become visible signs these goods, which are the object of conservation and at the same time continuity of use, were initially conceived to respond to the human need and right to worship God and generally to fulfill the liturgical purposes of the church. We must never forget this. When we speak of the heritage of the church, the patrimony and the cultural goods, this function was fulfilled for a long time until common feeling recognized the historical and artistic value of these goods without forgetting the goal for which they were created. It was only in the last century that these assets also became cultural assets recognized under international conventions and then by individual states. The Church's concern to avoid the dispersion of the immense artistic cultural heritage in which the goods belonging to the communities of consecrated life play an important part derives from the consideration of their intrinsic and functional value for its very own mission. The beauty and universality expressed in the language of art and culture have, over time, had a communicative power and a value that remain alive along the centuries. They've given public expression to the worship of God, evangelizing entire generations, engaging in dialogue with civil society, leaving the doors of the Domus Day open. Culture called to serve humanity in all conditions always, opens up unexplored itineraries, openings that give hope, that consolidate the meaning of life and safeguard the common good. Humankind is both the subject and the author of culture. An authentic cultural process fosters an integral humanization and a culture of encounter and relationship. The Church expert as she is in humanity, uses cultural heritage for the promotion of an authentic humanism modeled on Christ, the new man, and the revealer of humankind to themselves. The artistic heritage which forms a specific part of the cultural heritage has a liberal and therefore humanizing role. It benefits human development, a preamble to evangelization. I'm going to number three, the value of beauty. When we speak of beauty, 
or rather the aesthetic ideal of which the artistic good is the bearer. This, in a faith context, and we're talking about the church's patrimony and consecrated life, we cannot neglect this faith perspective. is always relative to the divine. Beauty refers to an original, absolute, a transcendent world interpreted by St. Augustine as a heavenly homeland. Beauty is the place of the revelation of the mystery of God and of the human person that understands their reality, the reality inhabiting them from all eternity. Starting from Augustinian theology, Christianity places God himself as the source of beauty and harmony. You are beauty, St. Francis of Assisi later said in his praises to the Most High. Over the centuries, consecrated life has ceaselessly set out on the footsteps of beauty, creating works that have expressed the faith and mysticism of light in search of new epiphanies of beauty. Beauty renews the human person, focusing each one in the truth of their own self, placing them in the right relationship with their neighbor and with creation. It orients them beyond themselves, where it's possible to meet every person in God. All expressions of authentic beauty, Pope Francis says, can be recognized as a path that helps one encounter the Lord Jesus so that the truth and goodness of the risen Lord may shine forth in the human heart. In fact, whether they are works of art or simple everyday objects, products of nature or our own creation, everything is a means of discovering God regardless of the era in which it has been produced. The Pope exhorts the Church to follow the way of beauty and to promote catechesis, the use of the arts in her evangelizing work, in order to transmit the faith in a new parabolic language. This is a guideline along which we should jointly commit ourselves which responds to today's sensitivities which is aimed which are aimed at recovering the link between truth goodness and beauty as cardinal ravazzi said and which cannot and must not be ignored by a pastoral approach based on the theological appreciation of cultural heritage the concern for a new humanism calls in response for the implementation of a strategy of human promotion combined with the proclamation of the gospel for the realization of which a culture of solidarity is necessary. It can be assumed, considering the cultural goods of religious communities, it can be assumed that the cultural heritage of the community that consecrated life began to exist at the same time as the communities themselves when they began to have life in the church. The need to preserve sacred books and documents essential to memory made it necessary to set up a library and an archive where liturgical texts, texts and other valuable writings could be collected. I'm speaking about the Franciscans, their experience now. The most precious zone after the church was the library. And they were to, anybody who stole a book was to be excommunicated. There were three places in the mendicant orders. The three places, the by the Bible, the refectory, because it was an uh, ongoing formation, because they read all the time, and then certainly, of course, the church. So the need, therefore, to uh, have a library in order to keep liturgical texts, the use of instruments suitable for the celebration of the Eucharist and for those liturgies typical of the life of religious communities, 
brought the use of sacristies and so on, and which formed the which would, uh, sorry, the use of instruments suitable for the celebration of the Eucharist and for the liturgies typical of the life of religious communities led to the birth of repositories which were to form the primordial nucleus of the cultural heritage of the church and of the communities. Soon a clear differentiation was created between goods, rules, constitutions and customs, objects and buildings in use by the communities themselves, goods that had a strong link with the communities and a particular cultural, liturgical and devotional connotation. The humanist Renaissance revolution marked the entry of secularism into the production of works of art as they were detached from any reference to monastic and religious realities in general. The good used to be considered important insofar it was aimed at the apostolic activity of the order, the institute that had commissioned it. The commissioned that cultural good today, however, it often appears unrelated to this original relationship. So the risk here is uh, to have beautiful museums, uh, but without any real reference to the origin of these goods. So when we speak about uh, cultural assets or cultural he heritage in communities of constricted life, uh, then we immediately think of its charism and the experience of the spirit uh, in a specific moment, as a cultural moment, uh, the collective uh, uh, heritage becomes constitutional, and this becomes or happens when the church recognizes the usefulness and approves the rule that expresses the charism and the specific way of living it. So the cultural heritage of a community of constricted life, uh, it is uh, strictly linked uh, to the categorization uh, phenomena, which is also an historical element. And this is uh, enriched uh, by multiple models, uh, which is the result of each member of the community. So a common good that narrates the memory of faith uh, and uh, somehow looks back uh, to the witnesses uh, that have happened over the life of that community, cliché community. The truth uh, of uh, the culturality of the goods of the community of consecrated life uh, always goes through their re-understanding and I want to find this. Uh, it's a charismatic re-understanding, this uh, belonging uh, to the mission of the community in its uh, dynamic development within the church. Uh, it is always a there's always a reference to the charism, which is the one that leads uh, and orients uh, the conservation, the cataloging, and the transmission and the, the valorization of uh, the cultural heritage. The church, uh, in its uh, evangel evangelization uh, approach, uh, also uses ways that are in conformity with the gospel, such as uh, the diversity of uh, the pace of each one and the circumstances, such as uh, the Vatican uh, Council, Second Vatican Council says, and the Gaudium Spes as well. So there is. Uh, a way of establishing that is a cinema ecclesia, which characterizes uh, through the radicality of the sequela Christi and of the primate of God and the capacity of living the mission, the evangelizing mission of the church uh, with uh, parisia and creativity. The dimension, the Christological dimension uh, and eschatological dimension that are part of constricted life, that are intrinsic to constricted life, uh, are part of the charismatic originality of the foundation event uh, that is expressed also through this instrumental the reality of its cultural heritage. Um, uh, the goods, in fact, which are the instruments of which the committee makes use are qualified by the mission of the church uh, in which the community of consecrated life is fully inserted assuming its ends as Canon 114 states, after having received the canonical approval, the cultural heritage of the Committee of Consecrated Life, which is both a depository and a beneficiary of, is always functional to the foundational ends and the pursuit of the foundational and ecclesial goals. Uh, the need for goods is determined by, by the answer. Uh, uh, this instrumentality must always be deciphered from the charismatic dimension and is further specified in the constitutions. So now I am at point 3.3.
So this gives continuity to the foundation of event, which as the process establishes values, it's, catalog it's a registration. So this refers to the tradition, the ecclesial tradition that was specifically canonical. And it expresses the function of administer temporal goods, which is a very typical tradition words as uh, to dispense uh, to give a dispensation or in latin as uh, economia or economos in the greek sources uh, so the underlying idea here was that the administration of the temporal goods uh, was a service uh, rendered uh, to god and to the church the goods that make up the patrimony are gifts uh, with respect to which the attitude that must be uh, actually be maintained is one of a humble uh, thanksgiving. And they are at the disposal of the church and must be safeguarded so that they may bear fruit for the common good. And it is in this perspective that the activity of preserving, selecting, and also handing down the cultural patrimony should be framed, each one according to the gift that has received, and it should be put at the service of others as good stewards of manifold grace of God, as Peter reminds us. It is important so to say a few words about the perception that individual members have about the value and instrumental significance of cultural heritage. So the perception derives from the community's representation of those goods to itself and to the individuals and how it is interpreted by both. It is always necessary, in fact, to uh, approach uh, it uh, through a work uh, of uh, in-depth understanding and assimilation, which ordinarily is designated with uh, a term, the term of formation, formation, memory formation of the good and its use. So without formation, it is difficult uh, for us uh, to save, at least in its full meaning, the cultural heritage of the church. So to make memory means uh, to safeguard the memory means to preserve the good in its permanent actual funding use. It means to preserve the attention and also the interest that uh, those goods or that good uh, produced. So fruition, it means also to make that good our, our own, uh, to internalize it. Uh, it's born from prayer, and the good uh, once aroused prayer, the good is internalized when it is relieved in faith, hope, and charity. As uh, the congregation wrote in the document on uh, economy being at the service of the mission. It becomes fundamental or paramount then to move even in the matter, accord in this matter according to a charismatic plan and in general through all those instruments established by proper law, which will have to be modified only for the greater purposes of correspondence and actualization. So this happens uh, mainly through all those bodies, for example, the chapters or other assemblies, uh, which are in charge of preserving and updating the charismatic uh, heritage, uh, refounding it uh, continuously, that is, uh, reviving it uh, in its original spirit uh, within uh, the present time. So the ecclesial interest in protecting and preserving the cultural patrimony of the communities of consecrated life is expressed through the pastoral option of its valorization. So to elaborate, to draft a path of learning about the cultural patrimony means today more than ever to place the human person at the center and his creativity. It means to elaborate formulas of sustainability informed by a vision of future of the future, which makes memory of a uh, lived faith, the, uh, the, the faith that is uh, lived concretely, an attentive gaze that opens to comparison for the benefit of the community and uh, consecrated persons uh, that the Castri stated in another document uh, in a letter uh, on scrutare was uh, that far from limiting themselves, uh, consecrated people themselves uh, uh, to regret the memory of past eras uh, have sought to instead to uh, improve the social fabric uh, of their context according to the habitus of Christian faith and hope. 
In the past, the apostolic creativity of the institutes included a particularly fruitful activity, both on the architectural level and in the production of, of images, and more in general, of sacred objects. I believe that before this topic, a consecrated life has three options. The first one, decipher uh, the uh, cultural heritage in order to preserve it, understand it, preserve it, and safeguard it by preserving the good. Uh, second, we ha it has to update it, actualize it, to update it and value the good in its evangelizing potential. And third, and I hope that this won't be the case, uh, to dispose of the good, uh, putting the custody of the memory at risk. Uh, now, I believe that the best would be for me to preserve the memory. And I believe that we have uh, this uh, role, and this is a situation we have lost this memory. And as Pope Francis told the consecrated men and women, without any memory, the autonomy and memory, uh, not the other memories, uh, there will be no future for consecrated life. So, concluding, the creativity of uh, the institutes of consecrated life today is called upon to seek solutions that are compatible with the specific nature of these goods uh, aimed at an appreciation of uh, the evangelizing potential that they have and uh, to uh, our call to orientations which aim at uh, uh, reconversion of an immense patrimony such as the one that the church has wherever possible. This is because we must not hide the difficulties that arise from the management of such an important patrimony in the face of a shortage of human and material resources. Uh, which uh, is uh, doomed to become even more uh, serious and of civil, civil laws that do not facilitate its administration. Therefore, in spite of the fact that, that the Institute has put in place all the virtuous behaviors outlined above, it is possible that the management of the assets will become unbearable, and therefore it can be done else than to dispose of them. Certainly, the solution is viewed with some apprehension, and this is why us from the congregation, before giving or granting any permission uh, to sell, not only of uh, sacred uh, objects, but also also of uh, the structures, uh, we are very careful. So given the delicacy and the complexity of the matter, it would certainly be desirable to uh, set up an ad hoc interdicasterial commission. The CIVCSVA, which we don't know how it will be called it later, it will just be dicastery something, but then for now it's congregation. So uh, the congregation, which is a congregation for religious uh, men and women and consecrated life, and the Pontifical Council for Culture. So, which is a body, this commission uh, of uh, mutual consultation aimed at examining in depth uh, specific issues. Uh, related to cultural and artistic heritage issues. Now, our dicastery, moreover, considers it necessary also for a formative purpose that the institution of a specific course on the cultural and artistic patrimony of the church to be included among the disciplines of the studium of our dicastery, that is, the interdisciplinary school for formation to the ecclesial magisterium and to the canonical normative of con unconsecrated life. Now, the invitation here is uh, to live out uh, one's uh, gift, uh, our charism, as uh, uh, to be at the service, uh, so the diaconia, so to become stewards, oikonomoi, of grace. Uh, the church, in the variety of its charism, expresses itself uh, in communion. And this is the beauty and the strength of the sensuis fide, of that supernatural sense of the faith which is uh, given to us by the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening.